Irish all the same. So I'm, I'm following um, the presentation here on the regional forecasting and I'm going to present now uh, the regional air quality products and how we evaluate them. And uh, all the products are uh, produced by uh, a consortium of different laboratories. Um, here in my presentation there are different keywords. First one is regional and regional in uh, MAC2 uh, and MAC means uh, language, it means Europe, so if we speak of regional, it's just Europe. Um, air quality, uh, the, the meaning is, is we, we intend to, uh, to have products on the air we are breathing, meaning that uh, we are uh, looking at the air composition but uh, focusing uh, on the surface, near the surface. Uh, if we speak about the products, I mean, we have to speak about the users, so we have interaction of you, with you, I mean, we have users and interaction with them. And uh, in my talk, I mean, the last uh, keyword was eva evaluation. So the evaluation is a, is a key process, uh, giving the uncertainty of the different products. And it's also what's giving the value to the product. I mean, any, any forecast without uh, any evaluation of its uncertainty has no value. I mean. uh, the regional air quality uh, in Mark II is fact it's not one chain of production, but it's two. Uh, the first one is uh, production uh, on a daily basis of forecast and of analysis. And the second one is an annual production of air quality reanalysis. So this is done a posteriori. Both of the two chains have a common feature. They are based on uh, some global model products, uh, some regional emissions and some observations. And we deliver uh, some products to the users and we interact with the users in order to uh, improve our products. Uh, who are the users? Uh, just to see the main users. I mean, we have some downstream application, uh, people doing some uh, local forecast uh, using uh, MAC2 products as boundary conditions for the final resolution model. We have also some uh, commercial applications like uh, a newspaper which is using, I mean, our forecast and put that in uh, uh, every day in a newspaper. Um, for the, the EVA products, so the, the annual reanalysis, the main uh, users are policy makers. Also, decision makers can use our products in, in where there's an event of pollution and they can follow the forecast uh, from the back to product. And we have also a large community of researchers uh, working on air quality but also on health and also on economics. I mean, because uh, health uh, costs quite a lot of money, so this is also economical uh, studies and the public also has access to all the forecasts. Uh, the two chains of production, what uh, is the basis? Uh, the basis is an ensemble of seven state-of-the-art <coughs> regional chemistry models, which are listed there. So the name of the model are on the left. Uh, you can see that uh, the current geometry is uh, usually about 20 kilometer resolution horizontally. Uh, some models go very high in the atmosphere, but not uh, not all, because we are focusing anyhow on uh, what's going on near the surface. Uh, for, um, for the analysis, we use assimilation methods and each model access assimilation methods. And what you can see is that uh, most of the models are run, I mean, in a meteorological, uh, in meteorological in institute. <coughs> uh, so why do we use an ensemble? Uh, as, uh, if, you, if you have followed the Vincent Ruiz presentation yesterday, I mean, there's lots of uh, sources of uncertainty if you do regional air quality forecast. Uh, I mean, there are all chemical uh, processes, but I mean, it's also based on uh, metrology. If it's regional also, we have boundary conditions. And so we like, I mean, our uncertainty is also on the boundary conditions. So, I mean, and because we have no model, I mean, which is always better than the others. If you make a uh, simulation, some, some models have uh, golden days, but some of those, uh, but often, I mean, you are good in some season or in, in for some pollutants, but no model is able really to, because of all the uncertainties, uh, to provide them in uh, good products every day on a regular basis. So this is why we wanted to have an ensemble. I mean, the ensemble combines uh, the different uh, information from each model in, uh, in an optimal way in order to get the best information. So uh, the ensemble proves to, uh, <coughs> to be among uh, the best case score if you look uh, uh, on long time series. So here is, this is an illustration of the root mean square error compared to surface observation for ozone. <coughs> uh, this is uh, for a period of uh, three months. And the different models have different colors. And the, has, uh, the, the light blue 
uh, correspond to the ensemble if you so you can see that the one three square is usually uh, the lowest. Uh, here is another example for uh, particle matter uh, below ten uh, microns for the aerosols, uh, and you can see for the Rubin square also that the ensemble is, is on average behaving very well. Um, so now uh, there will be two parts in my presentation, one which is devoted to the uh, uh, daily products and the second part will be on the annual reanalysis. So there are two main steps in the daily production, I mean the, produ maybe the, the model production itself and the second step which is as important as the first one is really the daily evaluation of these products. So how it works uh, in practice, I mean there are, um, uh, there are input data so all the models are using the same meteorological forcing, which comes from the ECMWF uh, uh, operational model, a uh, weather forecast model. Uh, we use the same emission data set, and we use also the same lateral condition, boundary conditions for the chemistry species, and they come from the global uh, production uh, from Mozart. So for the forecast, we only use this, but for the analysis, we need also to combine with observations and the observation is the same surface measurements of pollutants which are used for the different models and additionally some of the models are using some satellite data. Uh, so in each of uh, the seven centers, the uh, local production, uh, production of forecast up to four days with hourly outputs. Uh, the pollutants we are providing is ozone, NO2, CO, SO2, uh, particulate matter uh, below 2.5 and below 2. 10, PM 2.5 and PM 10, and recently we have been added also uh, the forecast of uh, birch pollen. Uh, if you co combining, I mean the, the, the forecast and and and, uh, and uh <coughs> sorry, and the observation also uh, we uh, provide analysis. Uh, this analysis are done for uh, a posteriori for the previous uh, for the past 24 hours. Uh, most of the models are providing ozone analysis and some models also have uh, CO, NO2, SO2, PM2.5 <coughs> or PM10. So once it's, uh, each uh, of uh, these seven models are produced, uh, the, all the files are transferred to uh, <coughs> the centralized production uh, location, which is Meteo France, where from this, I mean, uh, we regrid all the models on the same grid and uh, we uh, provide and we calculate uh, the ensemble which is based uh, uh, on the median uh, approach. Uh, so median ensemble for the forecast for the same pollutants and a median ensemble for the analysis. And that's only for ozone because uh, this is, uh, we have enough uh, models to provide an ensemble for ozone only at the moment. So that this will be increasing in the future. Uh, and also, I mean, the, the other bit is uh, the production of verification products. So it's another way to visualize uh, the chain. So on the left uh, and top, uh, this is all a near surface observation. At the moment, we, are, uh, we have agreement with different countries and we get uh, the data, the surface observation of pollutants directly from each country. And uh, in a new near future, uh, this will be replaced uh, by a centralized uh, retrieval of all the European data from uh, the European Environmental Agency. And uh, this will be uh, very useful in particular uh, for the time of delivery of, uh, of uh, the data, which, is be, which will be much earlier than what we get at the moment. So on the left, there are the two models, for, uh, the old model forecast, which feeds uh, uh, the ensemble production. And uh, <coughs> then what from the ensemble production, we put uh, some uh, numerical data on the FTP server. Uh, this is ensemble uh, forecast, ensemble analysis, and some air quality indices. And also, I mean, this feeding uh, a website with a lot of plots of uh, model products, but also observation and verification, and all this goes to the users. Uh, for the numerical data, it's on an FTP server at Meteo France. Uh, uh, the access to the data is completely free. The only thing uh, which should be done is uh, to the service agreement, and then you get a user and password, and you uh, get access uh, on an everyday basis on all the data which are available. And the data which are available on the on this site are the median ensemble forecast for all the species, uh, not that uh, for birch uh, for the birch pollen. 
uh, it's only uh, during the pollen season, meaning it's starting uh, in March and finishing end of June. Uh, this is hourly output, uh, so until 96 hours, so the four-day forecast. <coughs> it's provided on four levels, two formats, uh, and it's regraded on a 0.1 by 0.1 uh, latitude longitude grid. Uh, the medium, uh, we also provide medium ensemble analysis of ozone, so for the past 24 hours and hourly, uh, same format, same grid. And we also uh, provide some for the forecast of the seven individual models uh, on the same grid too, on the same level too. Uh, we calculate and provide the uh, air quality indices which are used by EEA in particular. And uh, for any uh, specific data set uh, for past periods, I mean, they are available on the map. So here is what uh, the website for the regional products looks like. So you can see that uh, there are different uh, parts. Uh, the beginning is really the, the products themselves, so the forecast and the analysis. And the lower part uh, corresponds to all the verification uh, products. So now I go through uh, I mean all the what's available on the website. Here is the page devoted to the individual forecast. So what you can see that you can select the date. It goes back to uh, 15 days before, what is available uh, as plots. Uh, uh, you can choose uh, which model you want to plot. Uh, the four levels, which are surface, uh, 500 meter, 1,000 meter, and 3,000 meter, and uh, the species uh, uh, and the different species too. Uh, if you click, then you can uh, possibly animate, uh, so you can see how the plumes evolve with time in the forecast, uh, and uh, it's possible also to download uh, the figures as PDF. Uh, here the page for the individual analysis. <laughs> so it's very similar uh, to the forecast page. You can still animate, uh, choose your date and choose your model. Uh, uh, but uh, for the analysis, they are only provided for the surface. There's, no, uh, there's nothing above the surface which is provided. Uh, here, uh, this is an example. Uh, I'm sorry because uh, that's how I chose a similar example, but I think I'm going to say something a bit different. So here, this is uh, the 96, uh, so the four-day forecast uh, of NO2 uh, from the 1st of June. Uh, that's from one of the models. And uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is just to illustrate uh, if you look at like uh, the plume which is uh, uh, east of Denmark. I mean, you can see its evolution. Uh, it's going down now. Uh, you can see how long, I mean, all the plumes which are formed will last. Some are lasting uh, more than a day. Uh, you can also see, I mean, nicely uh, the geodesic cycle of uh, this species, which is very strong. Uh, so it's 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 very nice too if you want to monitor in particular some pollution events. Unfortunately, I mean, for the past 15 days, there are not really huge uh, <coughs> pollution events to show. Uh, but this is a very useful tool uh, uh, in case of pollution. <coughs> There's a special page on, on this uh, website uh, for the ensemble. Uh, all the ensemble products, uh, so the ensemble analysis and the forecast, which are combined. So in a row, you can animate from the past 24 hours to uh, 96 hours ahead. Uh, so analysis plus the forecast. Uh, so currently, I mean, for the forecast, uh, what I said is uh, it's four levels and six species, plus the pollen when it's the season. And, uh, but for the analysis, it is still I mean, uh, near the surface. And, uh <coughs> Uh, and only for the ozone. Uh, on this page also there are other products uh, which are useful. Uh, this one is um, a possibility to have all the model display and the ensemble, which is the last one. So you can see uh, how the models are behaving and, and which model is high or low compared to others. And uh, this, this, this makes understandable also the ensemble. And what is provided here for uh, the, the, the 20 first 24 hours or, or for day one or for day two, uh, you can get the daily mean, but also the daily maximum, which is also useful if you're looking for, uh, for exceedances above uh, legal thresholds. And uh, the other product is uh, EPS grant. So for uh, uh, a large number of, uh, of cities in Europe uh, that you can choose, uh, you can plot um, 
TPS gram. TPS gram gives uh, the, the spread of the different models. So if uh, this, uh, this size is very large, it's meaning that there's a large spread of the model. And if it's not, I mean, it means that uh, all the models have a consistent uh, uh, forecast. So you can see that, for instance, uh, for EPM at night, uh, because uh, it's low levels, I think uh, we have all models agreeing well with very low, small signs. Uh, so this is also a very good uh, an indicator about uh, uh, the, the quality and, uh, and, and the, the, the quality of the forecast. Uh, we also use um, a nearly real-time observation, as I said, that we get from uh, individual uh, countries uh, for the verification process. Uh, here on the web page, you can uh, have plots for the different species and every hour of uh, what, uh, uh, what is available. <coughs> and with a color code, you have the values. Uh, the evaluation process, as I said, is a very important process. Uh, and we are using for this uh, some uh, statistical indicators that uh, maybe uh, Hank will speak about. So I, I, I will be quite quick. There are fairly simple indicators, statistical indicators, we are using for this uh, type of comparison. Uh, the first one is just the mean bias, which captures uh, the deviations between uh, two data sets. The second one is a root mean square error, uh, which combines the spread of uh, individual errors. So uh, the F is always the model <coughs> forecast and, and always the observation in uh, these formulas. Uh, uh, because, I mean, it's difficult, uh, each species has uh, its uh, background values and its uh, range of, uh, uh, its range of values. Uh, it's difficult to use uh, the mean bias to compare the performance from one species to another. It's better to use a normalized uh, quantity, and here we use uh, what's called the modified normalized mean bias. So it is dimensionless measure of the forecast bias, and it's ranging between minus two and plus two. So this is a good way to uh, compare performances uh, between different pollutants. Uh, the fourth one is the fractional gross error, which is a bit similar. I mean, as we have the modified mean bias compared to the mean bias, uh, fractional gross error is also a dimensionless measure of the forecast error. It is ranging between zero and two. And he has uh, this advantage to uh, not emphasize uh, outliers. And the last one is very well known. That's the correlation coefficient, uh, which indicates uh, the, uh, to which extent the model patterns match with the observation patterns. So for all the pollutants, we calculate uh, these five indicators. Uh, what observation are we using, and why and how do we select them? Uh, so because we are focusing very much on, on the air quality, so what's going on near, near the surface, uh, the best, uh, the observations which are best fitted for this are uh, the surface measurements, also because they are provided hourly, so they can provide a very good description of the diurnal cycle of the air quality. Uh, one question is, uh, the MAC products, uh, model products, as I say, are, uh, are provided on a one on point one by point one degree uh, resolution, but because both of the models are running at, uh, at the moment at point two by point two uh, degrees, uh, the effective uh, representativeness of uh, the MAC2 products is, is around 20 kilometer resolution. Uh, so uh, when we need to make this comparison with the observation, we need to select uh, the surface de station which are representative of the model resolution. If uh, you choose a a station which is very local, which represents only local effects. This is something we are sure we're not being able to represent in the model. Uh, so uh, this is not a such station we want to select for the comparison. So we, we want to exclude a station representative of very local scale. Uh, in, the, in the observation data, there are some metadata which are giving, uh, the, in principle, the type of, uh, uh, of uh, station, like urban, suburban, traffic. Uh, but we know that at the moment, this metadata is not very reliable. And this is why uh, in uh, the MAC project, which was before MAC2, 
there was this development uh, of an objective classification of surface station which was based on a statistical analysis of very long series of uh, uh, European surface measurements. I mean, uh, I won't go in detail, but this classification used different uh, factors to characterize uh, the, the station, like the weekend effect, the amplitude of the diurnal cycle, uh, the variability of a three day to, to see if there's some synaptic uh, signature, summer, winter difference. So different indicators in order to characterize uh, each station uh, using long, long series for each station. Uh, here uh, is the result of uh, this classification. So it's a classification which goes from 1 to 10. 1 corresponds to a background character, so very rural, uh, something like rural station. And the polluted character, if you go towards uh, the 10, is uh, like urban to traffic. So on the left, what you have is uh, the air base um, station. And that's the classification with the metadata which are uh, uh, which are given by airbase. So you have a color code which uh, slightly corresponds to the other color code. So the green is for rural, and, uh, and for traffic uh, you go to uh, violet and purple. So if you look here, the comparison between the two, the, the, the color code should be uh, quite similar, but you can see that uh, there are lots of, uh, quite lots of differences. Uh, uh, for That's for PM10 uh, between uh, the, MAC, uh, the MAC classification and the airbase classification. Uh, uh, one question is, uh, by doing this, we remove some of the stations which we feel are, are too local. And one question was, uh, do we still have enough uh, verification data? And uh, the answer is yes. That's uh, for a typical day, what we get. Uh, lots of stations for ozone and SO2, uh, less for CO because they are, and for SO2 because there are much less stations. But still, uh, we still have enough. Uh, uh, station for the verification by just sorting the sorry by just sorting the uh, the, the station for types one to five which are uh, more representative of uh, the Mac two uh, resolution. So what is the impact uh, of the station selection on the forecast performance statistics? So here is an example for NO two at uh, three UTC. Uh, top is for the all all uh, the station. And bottom, if, uh, if you select only uh, one two classes 1 to 5, uh, what you can see, uh, the scale is different. So it's, it's much larger on the top than on the bottom. So there's a, there's a significant reduction of uh, all the models. So all the data points correspond to each model. And, and the blue, light blue corresponds to the ensemble. So you can see that there's a significant reduction of uh, the mean bias, for instance. There's another way to illustrate this again. Uh, here uh, is an example for one of the models and for the ensemble. The ensemble is in blue. Uh, if on the left, it's if you use all the stations. And on the right, if uh, you use only the representative stations. So I put the, the, the five, minus 5 and minus 10. So it's clearly showing that uh, using only representative station uh, is improving the scores, just only because we remove some station which uh, we shouldn't have compared to. So there's an overall improvement, uh, and it's on all the statistical indicators and for all the species. This is more important for the short-lived uh, species in particular. So we've, we've got through now all the model products uh, themselves. So now I'll focus more on the bottom part, which is the verification. Uh, I just stopped to me. Sorry. The verification has um, several, uh, provides several uh, dif different types of plots. The first one is uh, just a, a plot of the model and another plot uh, of the observation available at the same time. So you choose your model, you choose your species, your date, and your time. And so uh, the background is the model itself, and uh, the species are the little round, I'm not sure if you can see. And the color scale used for, for the observation is the same as, uh, as for the model, meaning that uh, if the model performs very well, you wouldn't see uh, different colors uh, into the back, uh, spot onto the background. So it's a visual way to see how your model behaves. Uh, and it's uh, also a visual way to see where it behaves well, uh, where it doesn't behave well. <coughs> 
Uh, another verification product is uh, the comparison of the forecast uh, with, uh, with the analysis. So you, you take the analysis and for the forecast uh, at the same, uh, uh, for one day, for the 24 hour forecast, which is on the top right, uh, you, it's exactly the same time which is displayed, the one for the analysis, the other one for the forecast, and then you have the, the other forecast also, uh, longer forecast. So what you can see here, <coughs> Uh, what you can see here uh, for ozone, for instance, uh, that uh, the forecast uh, D plus zero, which means uh, 24 hour, uh, is very similar to, uh, to the analysis. Uh, 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 in particular, I mean, uh, you find uh, most of uh, the main features. If you look at uh, D plus one, uh, it's uh, still go very good, but it degrades slightly, and uh, D plus two is still also very good uh, with a, a larger degradation. <coughs> but, uh, uh, there's a quite a good consistency with time of uh, the forecast in general. Verification is also those some statistics, uh, some objective statistics. Here it's uh, forecast against uh, this uh, selected observation. The statistics, so you can choose on the left uh, one of the five uh, statistical indicators I, I, I discussed before. Uh, and you can, you can show uh, the results on statistics over the last week. Uh, over the last uh, three months. And here, uh, what is given is a modified mean, normalized mean bias as a function of uh, the forecast time. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, there's clearly uh, in the model and then in the ensemble uh, uh, the uh, Juliano cycle for the errors. But there's no clear, uh, very strong degradation with time as. Uh, you, uh, you would have, for instance, uh, for meteorological models. This is not uh, very pronounced. Uh, there's another way to, to, to <coughs> see this verification statistic and to see, I mean, how it evolves day by day. Here, is, this is the mean bias. So you choose, again, your, your statistics and your, spe your species. Um, uh, and you can display, I mean, what's going on at step three and step 15, meaning at three UTC and 15 UTC. So again, I mean, this slide blue is the ensemble. So you can see that it performs uh, generally uh, well. So this is a very good way to monitor, I mean, each model and to monitor also the ensemble, how it evaluates its time. Uh, a nice uh, way to uh, plot um, to put uh, verification is also to use uh, Taylor plots. Uh, the Taylor plots, they combine information of correlation and, uh, and uh, standard deviation uh, of forecast versus standard deviation of the observations. So if you go uh, toward the bottom, I mean, you increase uh, the correlation. And if you go towards the, the one uh, purple line, it means that your, the observation and, and uh, forecast have similar standard deviation. So what you can see is that uh, on this Taylor plot, that usually, and uh, as expected, uh, Jan Sabola has, uh, has a better uh, performance than uh, the individual models. You can see here, I mean, for ozone, that uh, usually all models are performing quite well and very, quite similarly. Uh, I haven't spoken yet on this, but uh, as part of the verification, there's also some high resolution models which are run. Uh, they are not in, uh, in an operational mode, uh, so we provide some uh, Mediterranean zooms where uh, it's, high res it's forecast over Greece and forecast over Spain. So why do we focus on the Mediterranean area? Uh, one point is, I mean, the uh, Mediterranean area has uh, very large emissions. It's well known and a complex uh, meteorology, which is not always very well handled by meteorological models. So, I mean, we are focusing there to in order to understand the processes and the possible uh, issues with the different models in this special area. So, on, on the website, uh, we display uh, the, the, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish uh, output model, uh, which is done at fine resolution. Uh, and uh, we there's a possibility to display the ensemble uh, with, uh, which is focused, but on the same area as uh, the models. So you can see, like, because uh, uh, the, the Spanish uh, operational model is uh, at higher resolution. It can provide, uh, for instance, for NO2 here, uh, higher values than we can, I mean, in the ensemble as expected, because of the resolution, we uh, tend to smooth uh, uh, the results. 
so there was uh, this new product which was introduced in the first of uh, of March 2013, which is uh, Birch pollen. This is very important for health and for uh, for economics too, uh, in particular in the north of Europe. Uh, so the birch pollen is not a product which is available all the all the all the year long. It will be only available every year from the 1st of March to the 1st of July. And uh, for the moment, I mean, for pollen, there's no nearly real time data which are available. Uh, so, uh, what we're going to do is uh, an a posteriori evaluation. So, there's no uh, evaluation product directly into the website. Uh, here is uh, an illustration of uh, one day for the birch pollen. Uh, one, one thing which is quite tricky with birch pollen is uh, the emissions, which is uh, uh, from uh, very complicated processes. And the other point with, uh, of uncertainty for pollen is uh, the distribution of uh, birch trees, which is quite well known in the north of, uh, of Europe, but uh, in southern countries, I mean, uh, there's no like a huge forest of birch. So it's quite difficult to have inventories of uh, where are the trees and where could be the pollen emissions. So, so there are still some uh, large differences between the different models, but this is a product which is under test, but uh, very promising too. Um, additionally to uh, the, the all the evaluation with the plots we put on the website, uh, there's also uh, some regular evaluation which are made uh, through what we call model dossier, uh, which are in fact, a report, uh, that's the front page of each report we do every six months. Uh, so a lot of things to read <laughs> for those who are interested. Uh, so what is the content of the dossier? I mean, there's one dossier per model and one for the ensemble, so it's made seven plus one uh, every six months. <laughs> plus there's one for special for the Mediterranean area. Uh, so it's produced on a six monthly basis. And in fact, uh, each six monthly basis, is divided into two periods of three months because we are looking at seasons, which is very important. There's a, a large variation of the air quality uh, uh, with uh, the seasons. This is why we cut into three months. Uh, each report includes a description of the forecast model and setup and its assimilation system too. So if you want to have information on uh, what, are, what are in the models, uh, it's all described in there. There's also for each report uh, the statistic of availability in time of the forecast and the analysis in order to feed into the ensemble. Um, each report uh, provides also a description of the observation which are used and of uh, the evaluation methods, uh, things which I showed you already. And uh, each report presents uh, the five statistical indicators uh, since the last report, uh, before <laughs> there were just three. And we uh, look at the three main pollutants which are ozone, NO2 and PM10. So the last reports were including only three days forecast because we went to four days <coughs> forecast until uh, from the 1st of November last year. So the new reports we are preparing at the moment for the past six months uh, will be uh, included uh, the, the four day forecast instead of three days. And uh, from this, I mean, from the statistical, and uh, we, we do an analysis and try to understand the reasons why some models or the model <coughs> deviate from the observation in order to be able afterwards to improve them. Here is an illustration of uh, comparison of uh, this uh, model uh, report. Uh, that was uh, on the left, uh, the NO2 from one of the models and the ensemble uh, for winter 2010-2011. And on the right, uh, that's the winter after. Uh, the color code is inverse. So on, on the right, is the blue is the ensemble and, and the, the black is the model itself, and its country. But uh, what you can see is uh, that uh, uh, there have been an improvement uh, uh, between these two winters. Uh, if you look at uh, the 10 and uh, minus 10 and minus 20 main bias. So it's a really interesting tool because it's been produced for several years now uh, in order to monitor the, the, and to understand the progress of the model and of the skills of the ensemble too. Uh, also, as I said, I mean, the models are not always performing the same way in different, in different seasons. So it's also very interesting I mean, to compare uh, the, the same model with at different seasons, how it performs. So it's also an important uh, tool for, uh, for seasonal variations. Uh, there's a special model dossier for the Mediterranean area, uh, also same six-monthly period. 
Uh, it's slightly different. It's more uh, like uh, on a research mode. So it's the use of this high resolution uh, quality for verification on one side for uh, around Spain, on the other side around uh, um, Greece. So uh, they provide a statistical comparison with uh, some uh, ground station which we don't access directly uh, in Mac. And uh, most importantly, I mean, they are looking at case studies and making a case study database in order to really understand the specificities of the dynamics emission chemistry in this area, which, uh, uh, which provides uh, uh, episodes of uh, bad or good air quality. So if here, for instance, it's a case study of NO high NO2 levels in Spain, which are quite well captured by, uh, by the high resolution model of IAMET, which is on the left. Uh, because of its coarse resolution, I mean, uh, the ensemble forecast captures most of, uh, most of uh, this high level, but they are lower as expected. Uh, in this case, there was also high NO2 ozone uh, in Mallorca, but uh, none of the model was able really to produce this. So now I go to uh, the second part, so the, the, the other uh, products which are available at the regional scale, which are reanalysis of uh, air quality. This is the EVA sub-project. Here the objective is to provide operational uh, air quality assessment for the past year, which we call reanalysis, and uh, based on the MAC2 system, so the seven models uh, as we use daily, and also an ensemble approach. The main product, uh, it's uh, yearly reports uh, which are mainly dedicated for use for policy makers, uh, people working on uh, uh, how we should reduce emission are very interested by this product. Uh, and the reports available already uh, started in 2007 in the MAC project. Uh, in MAC2 we have uh, 2008 <coughs> available and we're working on the production of the analysis in by the seven models at the moment for the 2011. So as <coughs> The process is uh, similar. <coughs> the process is similar to uh, uh, to what we do in uh, in 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 the daily production, uh, but there's a very important first step is uh, the, the selection of the observations, and uh, the observations which are used in EVA are validated data. So, uh, in order to start the process of the reanalysis. Uh, uh, we are waiting <coughs> for the pollutant from concentration from air base, uh, the validated data, which comes sometimes very late, unfortunately. And uh, from this data, there's a selection of representative observations for assimilation, and some of uh, the some of the models are using also satellite data. So production is a reanalysis for all years, and also the calculations from uh, the concentration of the different pollutants of specific indicators with ALSH later, and uh, the production of an ensemble for the, from the individual seven models. Evaluation is, is based on uh, an independent set of measurements of pollutants. Uh, we use uh, mainly the same statistical indicators as for daily production. And, uh, and uh, the main product of, of uh, reanalysis are uh, some assessment and validation reports which are produced regularly. So similarly to what I've shown before for the daily production, this is the same input data uh, plus uh, forest fires, which are sometimes included into the uh, daily production, but not all models. But for <laughs> the reanalysis, uh, we use all of the forest fire emissions too. And for the surface data, as I said, it comes from the airbase uh, uh, validated data, and the set is split into two, one for the assimilation and one for the validation, and the satellite data is really left on the shoulder of uh, the different teams. So again, each center is doing its local production of uh, yearly reanalysis. Uh, the pollutants are ozone, NO2, PM2, 6.5, and PM10. And there have been recently some experiments of assimilation on a yearly basis for pollen in order to improve uh, and to provide a reanalysis for birch pollens. So then, I mean, all this local pollution is transferred to the local production, centralized production center, which is at INERIS. And, uh, and they produce medium ensemble from the individual models. Uh, and uh, also they produce uh, many verification and validation products. So here uh, is the front page of the two reports for the 2010 uh, reanalysis. 
Uh, here are the selected set uh, of uh, observation from from database. For instance, uh, that these are the PM10 stations. So the red points corresponds to the data selected for data assimilation, and uh, the green point for validation. And you can see that uh, uh, that's for rural uh, stations. Uh, here you can see for suburban stations. So you have a, a patchwork of uh, red and green, and that's for the urban station. So what you can see is, uh, as also I, sh I showed when I, I showed the plot from the, from the uh, daily production is, uh, I mean, there are some countries uh, with uh, lots of stations, but there are also uh, some countries in Europe with uh, a very low number of stations, unfortunately. So we do not expect to have a, a very uh, improved analysis here where you don't have much data. Uh, here are some extract of, uh, of uh, one of the reports. Uh, having reports since 2007, uh, it's you, we can, what you can do is so sh see the evolution with time of, uh, of uh, the different indicators. So here is the mean uh, ozone from the ensemble uh, reanalysis, uh, 2010 on the left and 2009 on the right. So you can see there are huge differences uh, and large differences with higher levels of ozone uh, for 2010. And this uh, has been analyzed as being mainly due to differences in the meteorology. Here is an example of uh, other ozone indicators from uh, the uh, ensemble, and that's which are very useful for policymakers, for instance, or which are uh, the, the eight hour daily average exceeding uh, 120 microgram per uh, meter square. So you can see uh, that uh, you have a, a, a large uh, number of exceedances, in particular in the south of Europe. Uh, <coughs> and uh, that's uh, another indicator, which is the accumulated dose, the AOT40, uh, which is the accumulated dose over a threshold of 40 uh, ppb, which is an indicator for health too. So you can see that there's, a, in general, a consistency between the two, but uh, uh, some places like, uh, like in Spain, I mean, <laughs> have uh, low, nearly no excedences, but accumulated those which are quite high. These two indicators are very complementary. Here, uh, the new product, which I said, uh, are Birch pollen uh, reanalysis. Uh, the first one started in 2009. Uh, here is a picture on the left of the total uh, pollen load for uh, 2010, so, so it's 2010 report, sorry. Um, uh, it's in grain per uh, day and per meter square. So you can see that Birch pollen are mainly uh, in the north of Europe, and this type of reanalysis could be very useful. I mean, uh, people working uh, in health or in uh, pharmacology are very, uh, in, I mean, are very interested by this, by this sort of data in order to be able, uh, for, for instance, to produce uh, some uh, medicines for this, uh, and also uh, a useful, uh, a few useful output is the number on the right, the number of hours with pollen, pollen concentration uh, greater than 50 per meter square. Uh, so th these types of uh, of, uh, of products is very interesting, uh, but it's, it's just starting, and uh, their uh, pollen uh, data are very sparse. So it's I mean, the verification is going to take some time because there are less, uh, less really measurements compared to what we have for air quality. But uh, I mean, there are lots of people which are interested with this sort of products. Uh, so I showed what uh, we got from the uh, from the uh, analysis, but now it's uh, the evaluation process part. <coughs> uh, here, what you can see is uh, the ozone bias uh, uh, from uh, the daily max. Uh, from the ensemble compared to air base. And uh, so the, the, the color codes correspond to the bias. So if it's uh, around uh, light green or light blue, uh, the, the bias is small. So you can see that uh, there are lots of places with uh, low bias, uh, like in France, but it's increasing quite a lot uh, over Italy or Eastern Europe. Uh, the, color, uh, the round corresponds to rural station, the square to urban station, and, um, and the triangle to suburban station. 
Yeah, it's uh, the, the correlation of uh, daily max. The daily max is very important because it could go up to uh, the threshold levels. So here, uh, you can see that the correlation is really high. The purple is one, and if you go down uh, to blue, it's around uh, 0.8. So most of the time, it's, uh, it's around one. And so the question is very good in general with these assimilated uh, products. And that's, uh, and that's a root mean square error, uh, again, for the, for the ozone and for the ensemble. And you can see that uh, it's very consistent to what we had for the bias, meaning a very low uh, bias and root mean square error around France. But, uh, higher values, uh, in particular towards Italy. Here is uh, the, the ensemble daily uh, uh, max for 2009, uh, root mean square error. Uh, and uh, what I want to show here is the comparison between the ensemble on the left and uh, on the right, it's one of the individual model. So you can see that uh, in general, this agrees quite well, but uh, there are more, I mean, higher RMSC for uh, the individual model, in particular, uh, <coughs> in particular in North Italy. Here is a comparison with another of the individual model, uh, which is uh, much closer to what the ensemble provides. But still, I mean, you can see some spots of red or orange, meaning that uh, in this case, the model, individual model fails. And here also, it's another one of the other uh, models. You can see that uh, each model is providing slightly different picture, and the ensemble is, is capturing what is based in all these models. Uh, here is an evaluation of the impact of data assimilation. Uh, here, it is, this is a standard deviation. Uh, on the left, uh, uh, to the, it's the standard deviation to the ensemble uh, analysis. On the left, if it's the what we call raw simulation, which are just the forecast without any assimilation. So you can see that you have high values, in particular in France and Italy. And it's compared on, on the right to what we get with data assimilation, which uh, there's a huge reduction of these values, as we expect. I mean, the assimilation uh, should, uh, should uh, decrease uh, the standard deviation. You can see that it's very important, I mean, in particular in France, Italy, but still there are quite uh, uh, high values uh, in Germany, so there's still some work to be done, I mean, to improve this. Uh, uh, for this EVA product, we also use a Taylor diagram for ozone, that's a 2010 uh, reanalysis. So the color and uh, correspond to the different models, and the black one is, uh, is the ensemble, so you have a <coughs> three points which correspond to rural, urban, and suburban. But what you can see is uh, from this plot that the ensemble is behaving very well, as uh, we expect. Uh, uh, it, it, this is a product which is the best, uh, <laughs> which is giving something closer to the observation. Uh, from this uh, product, it's also possible to look at the temporal variability of model performances and to highlight uh, the seasonal variation. Uh, and understand I mean, when the model performs well or not. Uh, and this is also a source for improvement of model suites. If we can understand better our model, we have some clues how to improve them. And there's, <laughs> there's lots of spaghetti and points. I mean, the points are daily, uh, are daily mean of PM time here for rural stations. And then the lines are the, 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 uh, the shifted average. Uh, you can, what you can see is uh, the models when there's a little a with uh, in the legend it means that uh, it's been assimilated otherwise this is just uh, the raw forecast so what you can see is when you have assimilation and in particular the ensemble which is uh, a green uh, which is green is very high compared to uh, the creation is very high compared to the other products so this really means that when you assimilate the data you improve uh, you improve uh, your uh, your analysis yeah, that's the same for the root mean square error, where you can see I mean, how it varies with time for each model and check really that the assimilation is improving, uh, is improving the uh, product. Uh, there's also one possible comparison with other sources of information. Here, uh, that was a result uh, compared to uh, the European uh, Environment Agency. 
uh, from the from observation only on the right, uh, they provide uh, maps uh, of uh, uh, of uh, uh, mean uh, PM10, and you can see that it compares fairly well to what we get from the model. Although I mean the values they have are higher from the observations. Uh, and, uh, uh, also, it's possible. I mean, the, what is done in this report is to investigate scores, but by region. So Europe is divided in western, uh, central, southern, northern, and eastern. So it's cut into pieces, and you can see, I mean, that uh, the different models behave differently, particularly the southern Europe uh, for PM10, for instance, as a mean PM10 bias for urban station. You can see that the model are largely underestimated that. Uh, when we use the assimilation, uh, it's uh, like if you look at uh, the red or the, or the green or the gray, these are assimilated uh, products. You can see that uh, the reduction of the bias is very significant. Uh, here is the same for the root mean square error. So again, we can see that uh, the assimilated products with little a corresponds to uh, a lower uh, root mean square error. Uh, we know, for instance, that uh, all models underestimate systematically uh, the particulate matter concentration. Uh, here on, on the left, what you have is, is uh, the average of the observations uh, with the numbers for the different, for the different regions, so West, Central, Southern, Northern, and Eastern Europe. And what uh, you can see is that uh, uh, by assimilating, and uh, like the red, the green, and the gray, uh, bars correspond to assimilated products that uh, there's a significant increase of the PM10 average which goes uh, towards the observation, although it is still underestimated. So it's more sensitive in particular where you have a large underestimation like in central and southern regions. Um, a key point for policy users and which are also uh, given in this report our situation when uh, regulatory risk thresholds are exceeded. And uh, here what, you, what is plotted is the number of incidents when you have uh, exceedances over 50 for PM10, which is a threshold. Uh, so uh, you can see that there are quite lots of episodes down. It's a uh, scale, it's uh, for time. So there are one little bar for per day. And uh, we compare to that to the models, and here is the comparison between observation in black and uh, Shimer, uh, one of the models assimilated products. So you can see that uh, um, there's quite some capacity <laughs> to model the exceedances in some uh, time, but some, uh, but the model is missing some of uh, the events of exceedances, but it's doing in general quite well. So I have nearly finished. So it's a sh very short summary and conclusion. So. There are two regional production chains for air quality over Europe based on seven state-of-the-art models. Uh, we use an ensemble approach in order to, uh, to provide improved products, uh, to take the best of each model in order to, uh, to, uh, to provide a new product. So the two chains are a daily production and all its associated evaluation and an annual reanalysis and its associated evaluation. Products are numerical data, website plots and also regular reports where you can get in this report available on the web on the Mac site. Uh, there are lots of information about models and evaluation. Users, as I said, uh, there's a large uh, variety of uh, different users, and in particular the policy and decision makers. Uh, this is a continuous progress a process, so we're continuously uh, developing uh, each of the model in order to improve it, to, uh, to provide more products too. So this is, uh, this is a continuous process and we hope to provide uh, more and more products and better <laughs> with better performance. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.